April is stacked. There are a lot of indie games that look really cool this month, and it is definitely my longest monthly video update yet. I have a few games on the list that I'm gonna play the living heck out of and hopefully do some reviews on, but for now, let's get to the list. First up is Saberless. This is a 2D platforming adventure set in a dark fantasy world. The game's hand-drawn style really makes the game a bit more haunting and enhances the dark fantasy setting the game goes for. I must say that the enemies are kind of creepy as well. In the game you play as Antar, who wants to become a savior. This means a long journey to a forbidden land called Smiling Islands. The game puts a big focus on the narrative side as you make your way through the game. You of course have a lot of platforming and combat as well. Developed by Empty Head Games, release is planned for the 2nd of April. Minishot Adventure. I had this one on my list for upcoming Metroidvania games, and release is now around the corner. This is a top-down bullet hell type Metroidvania game. The Unchosen has returned from the underworld with its minions, destroying your village and capturing your friends. It's up to you to save the world and your friends. As this being a Metroidvania, you have a lot of bosses, upgrades and abilities in the game. The game seems really fast with responsive controls. I love the more cartoonish style they have gone for, looks very pleasant. I love me a twin stick shooter from time to time. Developed by Soul Game Studio, release is also planned for 2nd of April. Planet Tiles, I played this during the last Steam Next Fest and I really liked it. It's a cool little puzzle game slash city builder slash strategy game. Here you place blocks in different shapes and sizes on a planet, basically building the planet. In order to get more blocks to place, you want to score points by completing missions and also placing tiles of blocks in chunks of nine. There are a bunch more factors, you have different planets, there is more to this game, and I really had a fun time playing it. Harder than I expected, but definitely a fairly unique twist on a puzzle game. Developed by Mythic Owl, release is set for 3rd of April. Beat Slayer is an interesting title. This is a hack and slash roguelite, where you play the game to the beat of the music. From what I can tell, you wanna match the moves to the beat of the music, I guess you do more damage that way, unless if you miss a beat. I hope there are attacks and special moves you can do based on consecutive hits. There are also different weapons, upgrades, NPCs to interact with. In the game you play as Mia, who is battling robots in a dystopian Berlin. I hope there is enough content in this game. A game like this really needs a lot of build potential, upgrades and weapons to make the game interesting in the long run. Developed by Byte Rockers Games, release is planned for 4th of April. Buckshot Roulette. I've seen a few streamers play this game and it looks interesting. This is basically Russian roulette but with a shotgun. They have also added a few elements to this game to make it a bit more interesting than just your standard Russian roulette. Not that Russian roulette in real life would be terrifying. Here you instead play over a few rounds and in each round a few blanks and live rounds are loaded in. You can choose to pull the trigger on yourself or the dealer who is your opponent or you can use various items. These vary from taking a look at what's the next round in the chamber, shooting twice, skipping a turn and so on. The atmosphere of the game is great and it's a cool take on the formula. Developed by Mike Klubnika, release is also planned for 4th of April. Sons of Valhalla. This is a 2D combat slash base building game. You take control over Thorald Olofsson who just lost his home and had his beloved kidnapped. The man behind it have fled to England, so it's time to get over there, build a stronghold and reclaim what you lost. To do this, you need to recruit troops for your conquest, upgrade and improve your stronghold. You will do a lot of fighting, commanding troops, raiding villages, use siege engines to bring down fortresses. Looks like there is a lot of content for a, just a 2D pixel game. The graphics looks great. Yeah, I think this could be a lot of fun. I love the pixel graphics in the game. It's an interesting idea of doing all this in 2D. I think it could be a lot of fun though. Developed by Pixel Chest, release is planned for 5th of April. Final Factory looks like a really ambitious game. The game takes place on an infinitely generating map in space filled with planets, stars, black holes, ruins, aliens and so much more. Here you build your factory, perfect it, automate it as you explore. You will also have to defend it from aliens with your own fleet of ships. There are a lot of parts to this game as you can build and expand, tech trees for unlocks, exploration vessels for exploration, huge battleships you can build, cargo haulers and mega structures. 
I love that you're building in space and that you're not limited in any way really it seems. Just a ton of possibilities. Developed by Never Games Limited, release is planned for 9th of April. Under Space is another ambitious space game. This one is a bit more personal as you are flying a ship, not building a factory. The developer described the game as the spiritual successor to Freelancer with a Lovecraftian sandbox RPG twist. This to me sounds really cool and you can really see the Lovecraftian aspects of the game in the trailer. The game is open world and lets you approach it in different ways. You want to be a pirate or a trader, maybe a miner or an explorer, it's up to you. There are 60 ships, 150 pieces of equipment, there's a ton of bosses and things in the game. The game drops into early access this month, but it's actually feature complete. What is missing is polish, and that's what the focus is going to be in the early access. The developers put the game in around 300 hours if you're a completionist. Developed by Pasta Space Interactive, early access release is planned for 10th of April. Just a quick reminder to leave a like if you liked the video, and consider subscribing if you want more lists, gameplay videos, and reviews. Okay. Back to the list. Everban Shadow Legacy is a stealth platforming game where you play as Ayana in her journey to uncover the truth about her past and save the world. What caught my interest here is the character's ability to dive into shadows and move freely, climb walls and access places you otherwise can't. Looks pretty fun as you use mystical powers and high-tech gadgets to traverse and fight enemies. I wonder how much freedom you are giving in the game or if it's very linear and straightforward. But I think it looks great, a bit of cell shading over the graphics, really, really nice. Developed by Baby Robot Games, release is also planned for 10th of April. Yet another fantasy title. I mean, this looks like a fun game that doesn't take itself too seriously, with a lot of pop culture references baked into the experience. I hope the game isn't too gimmicky and actually delivers a fun experience. Humor in games is a very fine line that needs to be tread very carefully where it becomes cheesy and overplayed. Here you play as a rogue that also uses magic, and the game, for what I can understand, has an open structure and lets you do and approach things however you want. The combat looks okay, and all the rest of the gameplay looks okay as well, kind of what the title alludes to. But I mean, if they get the humor right and the story is on point, this could be a really fun game to play through and mess around with. Developed by Atomic Wolf, release is planned for 10th of April as well. Holy crap. Turbo Kid. I had no idea and never heard about the movie this game is based on. The movie looks like a wild ride with over the top action and gore. And the game seems to mimic this in the best way possible, with some beautiful pixel graphics in a metroidvania style experience. The game takes place right after the movie and will take you to some interesting places, you'll fight bosses, and to get around more easily you have your bike with you, it can also help you access different areas and you can call upon it at any time. The game's story is also a branching one and will change depending on your choices. So the game has some replayability with multiple different outcomes for the story. I think the combat and the platforming looks great. A lot of variety in this game. Developed by Outer Minds, release is planned for 10th of April. Holy shit, another one? That's four games for one day. Europa is a game I have looked at for a long time now and feels and look a bit old school with a flare of Ninokuni over it and maybe some Genshin impact thrown in there as well. The focus of this game seems to lie in its movement and traversal as you explore the world, complete puzzles, uncover secrets, explore ruins, upgrade your capabilities. The game looks very relaxing and it seems to be a vast world you have in front of you to explore. I hope the game has a story that drives the narrative forward, but we'll see and I wonder how much content there actually is in this game and how big the world is, but it looks fun and chill. Developed by Nova Dust Entertainment and Elder Pinto, release is planned for 16th of April. King's Grave. Here you play as a newly awakened king, as the kingdom have fallen to disease and the lands have been taken over by monsters. You now have to start rebuilding, bringing everything back from the darkness. As you bring your kingdom back by collecting resources, slay enemies, and rebuild, your power will also grow. There are several biomes to explore, puzzles to solve, hidden paths to find, and much more. I really like the concept of the game, it looks great as well. I just hope it stays interesting all the way through, and that they introduce new and interesting stuff all the way through as well. Developed by Egg or Chicken Games, release is planned for 17th of April. No rest for the wicked. Ooh, this could possibly be one of the best 
games releasing this year. This is developed by Moon Studios. They have previously developed the two Ori games. The second one being one of my favorite indie games of all time. It's up there. For this one they have gone in a totally different direction, creating an action RPG instead. And I mean this looks so good, jam packed with details and it just oozes character. This is a dark game where the fight for the throne is on, a plague that turns people into monsters is also spreading. The game's combat is of course in focus where skill and strategy plays a big part of it. You have a lot of weapons, with different movesets, enchantments, there is crafting in order to find a playstyle you like. The game can also be played in co-op. Yeah, there is a lot to this game. It looks super cool. Can't wait to play it. Developed by Moon Studios. Release into early access will be on the 18th of April. Aiden Chronicles 100 Heroes. And this one I'm also super excited for. Soon I will finally be able to play it. I've been looking forward to this one for a long time now. I'm a huge JRPG fan. And outside of FPS games, I think JRPGs are what I enjoy the most. Aiden Chronicles looks like it's taking huge inspirations from the older generation of JRPGs, but adds a bigger scale to it with over a hundred playable characters and big battles taking place that you get to control. You of course have a main cast, so I still think there will be a more intimate story about a band of heroes trying to save the world. But yeah, super excited for this one. Developed by Rabbit and Bear Studios. Release is planned for 23rd of April. Tales of Kensera Sao. This is a metroidvania that is inspired by the Bantu people and their tales. Here you wield the dance of the shaman, you have cosmic powers and fight restless spirits. The game has a big emphasis on the story as it is an emotional one about grief and loss and finding courage from it. Looks really good with some solid gameplay, love the colors and the art direction of the game. The combat looks fun as well. Developed by Surgeon Studio, release is also planned for 23rd of April. Another Crab's Treasure is a Souls-like game you play as a hermit crab named Krill. As you head out looking for treasure in order to buy back your repossessed shell and discover the dark secrets behind the polluted ocean. I mean, <laughs> the setting of this game is very interesting, a very cool choice. I wonder about the scale of this game, but from what I understand there are over 50 shells to find, so there ought to be a lot of bosses and hidden stuff in the game. There are also powerful mommy abilities to get a hold of for some powerful attacks. But yeah, it looks well made and fun. And from the latest trailer, it looks to be a lot more story in the game than I had expected, which is a good thing. Developed by Agro Crab, release is planned for 25th of April. Gatekeeper. I had this one on my list for upcoming roguelike games this year. This one reminds me a lot of Risk of Rain 2, at least when it comes to the graphics and certain functions of the game. In Gatekeeper, the heart of the universe have been stolen, and you must of course venture out to an unknown galaxy to retrieve it. This is a fast-paced roguelite with several playable characters that have skills and abilities, and as you level up, they become stronger. There are several planets to visit, bosses to fight, and over 100 items that affect the game in different ways. Looks like a solid experience and can also be played in co-op. Developed by Gravity Lagoon, release is planned for April. No specific date for this one yet. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found a few games that piqued your interest. Don't forget to leave a comment if I missed any good indie games that drop in April. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.